What's up, students? Hope you're having the best day of your life today. Today, we're going to talk about the force due to gravity, which has another name. It's the AKA weight, and how these two different things are different, similar, and how we can find and solve for both of them. Earlier in the year, the first time that you're going to be introduced to this force due to gravity is when you're solving for weight, you would see this equation right here, which says that the force due to gravity is equal to the mass times the acceleration due to gravity or the gravitational field strength. And oftentimes, guys, these two things will be confused. Remember, little g is not a force. Little g is a special type of an acceleration when we're really near a big mass. So what this really tells us is that weight is a force. Weight and force are very, very different. Your mass does not change. When you go off to a different planet, like here and on the moon, our masses are going to be the same. All right, and we'll make a video about the difference between gravitational mass and inertial mass because you might see that vocabulary used. But for all intents and purposes, guys, you definitely need to know that weight and mass are two different things. Weight, like we say pounds here in the United States, really a newton and a pound are both units for weight, just like feet and meters are both units for length. So essentially the gravitational force that a planet or another large mass exerts on another mass is called its weight. And you can never be weightless. Okay, Fg can never equal zero newtons. We'll see later in the year you could feel weightless, like on a roller coaster when you go over the top of a hill. You might feel weightless, but you can never actually be weightless. The other thing we need to know is that Fg is a force that always pulls. And this would be different than other forces that we'll see in the year, especially like the electrostatic force, which attracts and repel. Because when we are on Earth, if this is Earth not drawn a scale, right, gravity or the gravitational field is always going to point inwards towards the center. But then once we move past the weight force, we're like, okay, well, what happens if we're not near a very, very large mass? Like, what if we're not near a planet? How are we going to find out how two objects pull together? So for example, if I have one object here, we'll call this M1. And then I have another object over here, we'll call this M2. If they are separated by some distance, R, and this is going to be the distance between their centers, we are going to see that these two masses will always pull towards each other. All right, They always pull. So what we see is we would see some force that M1 exerts on M2 and some force that M2 exerts on M1. And due to Newton's third law, these two forces will be the same. But now, how are we going to solve for the Fg when I'm not by a planet? And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to take this symbol, capital G, and then we're going to multiply it by M1, M2. And then we're going to take that whole thing divided by R squared. So G is going to be the universal gravitational constant. It is either going to be on the reference table that you have for your course or it'll be given to you inside the problem. It has a value of 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 newtons times meter squared divided by kilogram squared. The m's, m1 and m2 are just masses and they have a unit of kilograms as always. And r is the distance between the center of their masses. And this is going to be in meters. Guys, r is not radius. All right, now we have to really know that because we're going to start talking about moving and centripetal motion and moving in circles and things like that where we're going to be talking about radiuses, radii, ra whatever. But R in this case is not radius. It is the distance between their centers. So let's, take an ex let's look at an example of how we would actually solve for this numerically. So in this question, I want to know what is the gravitational force between the Earth and the moon? And I will give you a couple of givens here. The mass of the Earth is going to be 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. The mass of the moon is going to be equal to 7.35 times 10 to the 22nd kilograms. The mean distance between them, R, is going to be 3.84 times 10 to the 8th meters. And we remember that G is going to be 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 Newtons times meters squared per kilogram squared. So if you want to pause the video real quick and see if you can find what is Fg. When I write my formula here, Fg equals G M1 M2 over R squared. I've already made my key with my unit, so I do not need to put in units. So I'll just put 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 times 5.98 times 10 to the 24th 
times 7.35 times 10 to the 22. And I'm going to divide that whole thing by the distance between them, 3.84 times 10 to the 8th meters. But guys, please do not forget this squared. So many times I see students forget that squared and they get the problem wrong. Your answer will be 1.99 times 10 to the 20th newtons. That is the amount of force that the Earth puts on the moon and that the moon also puts on the Earth. But now I've had real intuitive students that will say, hey, Finn, if FG is equal to MG and FG is also equal to G M1 M2 over R squared, does that mean that little g actually equals g m over r squared? And the answer to that question is yes. If I set both of these equal to each other, like m1g equals capital G m1 m2 over r squared, we in fact see if I cancel these out, that's what we're left with. And we can prove this knowing that on Earth, little g is roughly 9.8 meters per second squared. We can do that here on Earth and say 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, which is capital G. If I then take that mass of the Earth again, 5.98 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, and I divide it by the distance between me and the earth, which is essentially just the radius of the earth, 6.37 times 10 to the sixth meters squared, I'm going to get 9.8 meters per second squared, roughly. And you just said like, all right, Finn, what did you mean when you said that it's essentially just the radius of the earth? Well, guys, if I were to bring this out and say 6.37 times 10 to the six, so one, two, three, four, five, six, this right here is going to be the radius of the earth. The radius to my center or the distance to my center is roughly one meter. So if I do the math with this number here, or if I did add my one meter, we, we would see that there's really not going to be that much of a difference. So although this is the distance between our centers, I just use the radius of the earth because my one meter is going to be a negligible length when I'm doing the math. The most common question that I do see though with this FG equals G, m1 m2 over r squared if you're not going to be solving they're going to ask these questions and i call them the what happens when and you're going to see these problems all throughout physics but just very common inside this particular topic and it's what happens when i manipulate one of the variables here if i change mass or I change R, the distance between them. Here's always what I do, and here's an example, like what happens to FG if I double M? So what happens when I double M1? What happens to FG? Well, here's what I do for all these types of questions. I plug in one for every single variable. So one for G, one for M1, and then one for M2, and then one for R. And this will just give me my initial condition that I can work with. This is gonna be one. Then all I have to do is change the thing that they want me to change. They want me to double this number here. So I'll do the same exact thing. One times the thing they want me to do divided by one squared. Now I can see that this is going to be equal to two. So what happens to FG when I double M1? FG doubles because two is double one. What happens when I half R? I do the same thing so I get my initial condition. So I already set my initial condition. You'd have to do it each time. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to change what they want me to change. So the top will remain the same, one times one times one, that's G, M1, M2. Now what I do is I'm gonna take a half of that and I'm gonna square it and I'm gonna see when I half the distance, this comes out to four. So one over four, FG is going to now quadruple. And sometimes they'll even change two variables. What happens if I double M2, I quadruple M1, and I double R. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up, I have my initial condition of 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to keep G the same. They want me to double M1 to 2. They want me to quadruple M2 to 4. And then they want me to double R to 2, and I have to square that. So 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 4 is 8 over 4. We'd see that that relationship is only going to double FG.
All right, guys, so that's Newton's laws of gravitational motion, how to solve for the force due to gravity, how to solve for the weight, how they're similar, different, and how we can use these formulas to not only solve for little g, but to find the weight of the object. If this video helped, guys, please give it a thumbs up so it gets spread amongst YouTube to all the other physics students taking this. Share it with a friend, and I'll catch you on the next one.